All right, we're gonna watch this Hassan shit. So I gotta prep for some some stuff. We're gonna move on now. We're moving on. Jackson made a tweet last night. He deleted it because fucking Twitter left this. Jackson got ratioed really hard and really bad. Like, I went to bed and it was like at 600 quote tweets. And apparently he was getting death threats. He was getting so much fucking hate. And to my disgust, to my disgust, even people who act like they're sympathetic to me and Jackson joined in with the fucking mob of dumbasses on Twitter. Yeah, DGGers were literally, it wasn't just like the leftists, right? It's DGGers and everyone you could fucking possibly imagine was going after Jackson for this fucking tweet. Literally everyone you could fucking imagine, right? Everybody going after him. Many of you in the chat probably are like, huh? What is Jackson saying here? What does he mean? Now, I want to quote Mao so you get it through your head. No investigation, no right to speak. Now, do you have to agree with it if you don't understand it? No, you don't have to. Academics, teachers, social workers, engineers, managers, nurses, and network writers are not working class. What if I told you this was just true? And what if I proved it to you that it was true? We're going to break down every facet of this tweet and its implications. And by the end of this, if you are coming at this against Jackson, you're going to feel like a fucking idiot. In the main, this tweet is true. Let's first address before we hear Hassan's reaction, because we're going to save that. I'm going to actually explain it to you so simply. The left has a Madonna complex where class is defined by the extent of your suffering and grievances. That's the first thing we're going to begin with. Why have you made the assumption that class is based on suffering and grievances? What are you saying? That Twitch streamers are the working class? No! At no point did Jackson ever imply that. I have gone on record myself saying the exact opposite. Our personal background is no more definitive necessarily of our class position in the realm of politics as with Marx, Engels, Lenin's, or any other fucking Marxist in history who clearly did not come from proletarian backgrounds. So no, we are not fucking saying that Twitch streamers are working class. We've never said that because being working class is not the same thing as being good or bad or suffering enough. They've they have translated Marxism into an encyclopedia of emotional grievances with which to justify an economy of virtue signaling, suffering, and morality. The more you suffer, the more good and virtuous you are. They made it seem like he was saying academic teachers are all bad. He said they're not working class. He didn't say they're bad. He didn't say they're bad people. He didn't say they're less virtuous. He didn't say they're not suffering. He said they are not working class. Jackson deleted this tweet. He deleted this tweet because it was bad optics. It did reach some normie nurses and some teachers who also got upset with it. Because it was a bad storm. It was a bad storm and it was bad optics. I think Jackson understands that. I understand that too. And I'll explain to you why it's bad optics. It's very simple. It's this very simple distinction that's going to literally solve all the confusion about this. Ready? Let's focus on teachers, nurses, and possibly social workers. Are these people class enemies? No, they're not class enemies. Just because someone is not working class doesn't explain what proximity they do have to the working class or what the relation to the working class is. That's not enough to explain it. All you're doing is pointing out something very simple. These people are not going to form the core of the working class movement in the United States. The reasons for which I'm going to literally explain to you so simply. They will not form the core of a working class movement. They may be a part of the working class movement. They may have a proximity to it. They may not be class enemies, but they will not form the core of any working class movement in the United States. Now, let's be clear about something. 
in the colloquial sense, the non-Marxist sense, you do say that nurses, maybe social workers, and teachers are working class. In the colloquial sense, they obviously are. And the reason they are is because like other working class Americans in the colloquial sense, they're doing their daily grind. They're busting their ass every single day to put food on the table, to support their families, and they're working day to day, hour to hour, to do that. They are working class in the colloquial sense, yes. But this is why you have to be very careful about distinguishing the science or even just the political, strategic, scientific perspective of Marxism from the colloquial and cultural one. So from the colloquial and cultural sense, obviously teachers and nurses are working class, right? But if we are political strategists and we are having a class analysis of our society, we have to critique all of the social formations and elements and ask the question of what relationship will they have to a working class political strategy? What is their fundamental and essential class nature, right? That doesn't mean they're going to be class enemies. It just means you're not going to be relying primarily on them to form a working class movement. And that's a very important distinction you have to draw, okay? Okay, now this is another distinction we're going to have to draw. Specifically, only going to be isolating teachers and nurses and possibly social workers here, right? Because let me tell you what, Netflix writers, possibly engineers, I would say engineers can be split 50-50, and academics almost entirely are class enemies. So academics, 50% of engineers, maybe, and managers and Netflix writers, those are class enemies. I will... Yeah, that's just, they are class enemies, 100%. As a class, they're going to be class enemies, right? Engineers could, maybe can be divided along class lines, but the rest, yes, they're class enemies. Besides teachers and nurses, for reasons I'm going to explain. When you understand class, some people are going to say, class is just based on what your relationship to the means of production is. That's true, but the means of production is very vague. The means of the production of what? Of economic value? Of commodities? Because if you're looking at it from that perspective, and you're applying that to 2021, you are not going to be able to explain classes in terms of ownership. The idea of, are you an employee or an employer? That's what defines class. That's a political distinction that's based on how you're going to be recognized by the law and tax distinctions and things like that and federal regulations. That's a legal distinction. That's not actually a fundamentally economic relation. I want you guys to understand what economics means. I know a lot of people say class is not income. It's not, but income is part of class and the reason it's part of class is because economics is about how material goods or access to material goods is distributed across society. So if you're looking at such variations, employee that's making that's getting salary 200k a year, or like Hassan said, a labor billionaire like LeBron James, compared to you know a coal miner or compared to a janitor, that is not a meaningful. You don't have a meaningful concept of class. Class is supposed to talk about the different relationships to the economic means of production. You're defining a relationship to the the economic means of production so broadly that it encompasses radically different economic strata and economic ways of life and economic wealth, your notion and concept of class is fucking worthless. If your concept of class is just about employees versus employers, it is not specific enough to actually explain the very observable economic differences in our society, the economic outcomes in our society. Because class is about the relationship to the economic and not just political means of production. And what I mean by that is it's not just based on your title in relation to a business. It's actually based and supposed to be the determinant factor as far as your relationship to the way in which we produce and consume things. So if you, when you're talking about class, you have to begin with that understanding. It's supposed to explain the economic outcomes that we see in our society. If your notion of class has absolutely no fucking explanatory value as far as the economic outcomes that we see in our society, you don't have a concept of class. 
There are clear economic differences, very discreet economic differences between Netflix employees and people working in factories. They have radically different economic ways of life, patterns of consumption, and so on and so on. Just night and day, right? If you're saying they're part of the same class, your concept of class is fucking worthless because it is not able to explain the different economic outcomes between those different groups. Remember, the economic relation to the means of economic production is supposed to explain the economic outcomes you see in our society. In Marx's time, the proletariat was a specific class with a specific pattern of consumption. It had a specific cultural reality. It had a specific way of life. It had a specific geography. And it, 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 it could actually be identified economically as distinct from the rest of society. If your notion of what the proletariat is, is so fucking all-encompassing that it's going to start encompassing professors and graduates students and teach it's completely fucking worthless you may as well have no fucking concept of class whatsoever you may as well just say are you an employer or an employee where for the employees fuck the employers you're not talking about economic class you're talking about a very arbitrary politically instantiated and politically recognized distinction as far as workplace status is concerned because it rests upon the assumption that the 19th century form of private property has persisted up to this present day, when it hasn't. Ownership, so-called ownership of the means of production, is not like in the 19th century, where you had the power to arbitrarily exercise uh, the freedom to do whatever the fuck you wanted with your property, and it's just your property is what it is, do what you want with it, as Marx described of the commodity. That's not how ownership works today. Ownership is derivative today. And by derivative, I mean it takes more the form of like um derivative stock contracts like the right to buy things the right to sell things the right to have exclusive contracts with government projects the right to have a monopoly over a certain ip it's a derivative form of ownership and not a direct form of ownership so the idea that you can directly transplant the 19th century classical liberal form of ownership to the 21st century and base your class analysis off of that is going to lead you to extremely stupid fucking outcomes that are not able to explain the variations among the various different social formations and segments of society along political, cultural, and economic lines. It has no explanatory value if that you're going to commit to such a dogmatic analysis. Now, here's an important distinction you have to draw when it comes to teachers, nurses, and many social workers. In a, in a, even in a Marxist sense, I would argue, even in a Marxist sense, you could call them working class. But as nurses and as teachers, they are not working class. The, the basic meaning of that is that in terms of their labor, it is not an abstract or general form of labor. It's a form of labor bounded up with definite institutions. So when nurses are going to act on behalf of their interests as nurses and not just as human beings trying to make a living and trying to get by, they're not going to be do so as members of the working class. They're going to be doing so as people who want to defend their current institutional and professional position. It doesn't matter how poor they are or how hard they work in a fundamental materialist sense they are not going to represent general labor they are going to represent the specific and private interests of the institution that they work for when push comes to shove if they act as a class what's ex incredibly ironic about Hassan is one of the ways nurses and teachers can assert themselves as working class rather than as teachers or as nurses is things like general strikes where they risk destroying the institutions that they work for in order to assert their fundamental human dignity as deserving a basic standard of living and a basic level of living conditions and so on and so on when they do things like general strikes that you could say they're acting as a working class right and it's interesting Hassan is pointing this out because Hassan and we're gonna get into this actually attacked the panel um, that was hosted by many influencers to call for a general strike and strategize about how they can get a general strike going in this country. A general strike is a way for people 
to withdraw from their specific institutional context and act as one working class people. Nationwide general strike. People on Twitter and Hassan himself, Hassan doesn't like the idea of a national general strike. And the reason why is because a national general strike is a great leveling process. It means that if you're a Netflix employee, you don't have as much of an incentive to engage in a nationwide general strike as a janitor, right? A janitor is like, yeah, or a McDonald's worker. A McDonald's worker is like, yo, fuck my job. You know what I mean? Like, my job fucking sucks. I don't want a general strike, but a Netflix employee is like, hmm, I don't really want to risk it because I'm kind of in a comfy position. So a nationwide general strike, a general strike is a way for a general working class to assert its existence, right? But Hassan doesn't like that. Hassan prefers for graduate students to organize within their cozy confines of the gra because that way their interests will not be weighed against the interests of the country's actual general work working class. You understand the game that they're playing? They went after Jimmy Dore and the rest of them's call for a general, national, nationwide general strike because they fear this tremendous leveling process, which is going to turn the professional managerials, if they commit to their LARPy working class pretensions, it's going to make them equals of the actual working class of this country. But the professional managerials do not have the same incentive to risk their current social position that the country's general working class does. And the truth is, even nurses and teachers don't have that incentive themselves. Teachers are an extremely institutionalized social formation. They're very much dependent and very much instantiated in their specific institution of government public education right? Another important thing about pointing out how as nurses and as teachers, these are not members of the working class. Again, as human beings, you can maybe say they're members of the working class. As citizens of this country, you can maybe say they're members of the working class. But as nurses and as teachers, they're not. And the reason you can say that, the reason it's important to point that out is because the left has fetishized nurses and teachers as like the vanguard of the working class because their interests have for a long time been aligned with those of the Democrats, the social engineers, and the liberals, right? The social engineering Democrats who have this agenda of engaging in this cultural social engineering project are very easily able to win over teachers and nurses because those people are already overly socialized and institutionalized. Now, you, when you have a Marxist perspective, you don't have a black and white perspective. You say, oh, nurses and teachers are bad. Oh, they're reactionaries. Oh, they're class enemies. They're enemies of the people. Oh, they're, um, they don't work hard. Oh, they're parasites. That's not true. They are hardworking people who are trying to get by day in and day out to support their families, right? You have to have a scientific view of this and not an emotional one. You just have to understand that as teachers and as nurses, Nurses, they are not going to form the nucleus of a working class movement in this country. The way you're going to be able to define and measure this very simple understanding of who is and isn't working class is Marx's concept of simple labor. This is the first chapter of Capital. The value of a commodity represents human labor in the abstract, the expenditure of human labor in general. And just as in society, a general or a banker plays a great part, but mere man, on the other hand, a very shabby part, so here with mere human labor. It is the expenditure of simple labor power. And this is the important part we're going to highlight. The labor power which, on an average, apart from any special development, exists in the organism of every ordinary individual. Simple average labor, it is true, varies in character in different countries. This is very important. And at different times. But in a particular society, it is given. Skilled labor counts only as simple labor intensified. What did Marx just say here, right? Let me give you an example of what he's talking about as far as simple labor is concerned. So he already told us that it varies in character in different countries in different times. But it basically and more or less represents it basically and more or less represents the type of labor that an average person, an ordinary person in a given society with an average number of skills is going to be performing. So how do you think about that? Well, what's the kind of labor that any old dumbass 
fresh out of high school, for example, in the post-war period, is going to be engaging in. What are they going to do? They're going to go work at a factory for Ford or for GM, and they're going to be able to have a family. They're going to have this average, middle-class, baseline standard of living, right? It's going to be the factory job. Now, in the post-war period in the United States, you have to have this understanding of the history of the working class in this country. There was a social contract that was arrived at between the government and the, the the American citizens, more or less, right? Or at least the baby boomers after World War II. You are mostly factory workers and you're mostly doing these heavy industry coal miner jobs, right? A lot of people on Twitter are being like, oh, you're fetishizing that class just because they're manly and masculine and because of their aesthetics. No, that's not why. There's a very specific scientific reason why we are privileging that class as the working class. And the reason is because in the post-war period, the United States as a state was built on the basis of an economic social contract according to which an average normal human being in the United States um, is going to be guaranteed a basic job, a basic standard of living, and that the government is going to organize itself around, in, the, in, a, in a way, in a perverted and twisted and ironic sense, the U.S. kind of became a worker's republic. But hear me out here, right? Our state and our government, at least officially, formed around fulfilling the interests of this general labor, of the general working class, right? Now, we all know the story of what happened. We all know the story of what happened. During the 1970s, these jobs started to ship overseas. So the shadow of this once clear form of general labor, of the general working class, began to haunt the country, right? People like Trump would come and, and promise the jobs are going to come back. And that is why Trump formed the nucleus of, you can say it's a reactionary, but it is an authentically working class movement. Trump's movement was. You could say it was a reactionary form of a working class movement, but it was a fundamentally working class movement because it represented the general demand by the population on the basis of the general form of labor that can be applied to everyone. Some may reproach me as, hey Haas, aren't those factory workers and coal miners and the rest of them also institutionalized in the sense that they're very much tied down to their companies and they're willing to serve the interests of their companies? I mean, Haas, what better example of this is there than oil workers? Oil workers defend the interests of the fossil fuel companies because it's how they make a living, right? The institution of the fossil fuel companies. And my approach will be, yes, but the difference is, is that they only do so insofar as those jobs represent a general form of labor for the American citizen, for the country. It represents the general form of labor they have come to expect after World War II and around which the political relationship between the state and the people has been based. And it's the breaking of this social contract that actually resulted in Trump's movement and Trump's the Trump phenomena in general. Because this social contract was broken, that's why you had the Trump phenomena, right? We have to be clear, the working class is not only going to be defined by where it is working and the nature of its profession. That's a very important and big factor. But the working class is also going to be defined in the political sense. Like, if we're going to say what expression of a political demand is a working class demand of this general expression of the general interests of general simple labor. Simple and general labor in the abstract. What forces represent its interests? Now, when nurses act as nurses, they are not representing the interests of general labor. They are representing the interests of people who are educated in a way that the majority or even a significant amount of the country is not going to be. And the same is true for teachers. When teachers act on the basis of their interests as a teacher, they are only doing so insofar as it represents the whatever barrier to entry it is to being a teacher. A teacher is not a job that is generally replicable for the general broad strata of the population. Whereas when the steel workers and the construction workers and these type of people are representing their interests in general, like cohering them in the way that it was in the Trump movement, they are at least making the pretense to a type of job that more or less anyone can have 
Or at least that's how they think of the job, right? Well, this is the job that an average Joe can have. It's the job of the average Joe of this country, right? You have spies in the chat. I don't give a fuck. Obviously, I have haters in the chat. Are tech workers in the boat? No, they are PMC. They're professional managerials. It's very simple. Your class interest is going to be expressed at the level of the interest of labor in general. Labor in general. Not labor in your small little fucking graduate student workplace, but labor in general what is your relationship to labor in general that's what's going to define it you could also say that well has the type of jobs that the heavy industry people have isn't something that the majority of the country can just have it re does represent a specific segment that may be true but it's a form of representing general labor now i agree those types of jobs cannot represent the majority of jobs people have in this country why do you think so many people have to work in the in the service sector is it is it because they're lazy and you know they're, they're not tough enough to work in steel no it's just those 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 steel jobs are because the jobs have shifted overseas not really attainable for most people anymore but they do represent the type of general labor that was uh whose standards of living was earned by the working class movement of this country after the post-war period you have to keep this word in mind general labor that's how you understand the interests of the working class now despite those jobs no longer being attainable the heavy industry jobs that form the nucleus of trump's movement represents the general interests of general labor and is therefore the most authentic working class in this country because and i'll explain it to you here let's say you work at a shitty job in mcdonald's grinding day in and day out if you try to unionize your job at mcdonald's all you're basically saying is this job at mcdonald's is befitting for a dignified human being no, it's fucking not service sector jobs are bullshit jobs that are meant to um waste the time of so-called surplus populations which is of course a malthusian anti-human uh phenom uh like category that our elites believe in but that's what they're meant to absorb is people that are considered not needed for capitalism right but when you act on the interests of general labor you have to ask the question of what types of jobs should ordinary Americans have? What types of jobs should we have? What types of jobs should we expect? What types of jobs represent our interests and the interests of our labor in general? And those jobs are going to be the heavy industry jobs because those are jobs that are not only socially necessary in the like sense of socially necessary abstracted from material nature, but they are literally the jobs materially necessary for our reproduction as human beings. You don't need service sector jobs. That's the truth. You only need service sector jobs because we are having our time wasted by the eight hour day. So we don't have enough time to attend and serve ourselves. And we don't even have enough money to serve ourselves. But imagine, for instance, if the Communist Party adopted as its platform, shortening the workday to four hours or two hours even, and having a general vocational trade school program, abolishing the service sector so that we could all have heavy industry jobs that we work, you know, four hours a day, supposedly. And we have free time plus more wealth to do with what we want with it, right? That would be a working class demand. Now, that's not something professional managerials are going to get behind because professional managerials reproduce their existence on the basis of managing the way in which human beings currently have to live their lives. And like even Netflix creative artists are producing shit to appeal to the ways of life we have right now that doesn't that involves this suffocating lack of economic emancipation and freedom, right? How do you solve the problem of automation? You solve it by shortening the hours of the short, you solve it by shortening the workday and the work week. That's how you solve automation. Shorten the workday and shorten the work week. Simple as that. Now, many have tried to say there's some dumbass on Twitter who quit the Discord and decided he didn't want to debate me because he's too much of a fucking coward. Um, who I debated before, and they were so nice and cordial and understanding. They were like, oh, it's more like a discussion. And they wouldn't ran their mouth on Twitter saying that uh, they beat me in the debate. So I'm gonna, I, when I get the chance, I'm going to bring them back on. Apparently, they're running away. So whenever they decide to uh, grow a pair and come on, I'm actually going to d fucking wreck them. But they were trying to say, revenue is not what is fundamental to class. Ownership is. Here's the thing. 
I need you guys to understand something about Marx's theory of value and his corresponding understanding of the various classes of our society. For Marx, Marx was very specifically positing an explanation for how value in our society is being produced. How is it that you can start out with a given amount of money and end with profit? How do you get from M through the investment into a commodity to M, uh, M, what is the M, uh, what's the name for it? More money, whatever that symbol they put at the end of M, right? M prime, yeah, M prime. How do you get from M to a commodity to M prime? Marx, Marx's basic explanation for this, right, was that it was coming from the abstract human labor of society in general. Abstract human labor is what is responsible for the production of value and the corresponding contradictions in the expression of value in our society in the form of price, like for instance in the form of the falling rate of profit, can be explained by the relationship between the value form and abstract general human labor. The whole decisive point in Marx's formula here is that is not creating some kind of axiom that anyone who sells their labor is a worker and that any form of compensation for any type of service is a form of labor because you're paying them. More fundamentally, the reason for that is because according to Marx, that was what explained or what was responsible for profit. That what is, that's what explained not only profit, but the falling rate of profit and general capitalist crisis. This basic contradiction between the form of value and the vital material source of value itself. So he wasn't creating a dogma first and then drawing from a first premise. He was asserting something and then developing and proving why it was in the form of proving the way in which labor is responsible for the production of value and surplus value specifically labor was responsible for surplus value this is something he took it upon the burden of himself to prove in capital right but the way in which he does this does not afford, afford this dogmatic idea that just because you're not the employer means that you're performing some kind of abstract productive labor that is responsible for the surplus value being produced in our society in the aggregate. That is what the burden upon you is to prove in 2021, because this is where it gets interesting, right? These people in the DSA would have us believe with a straight face, they would try to tell us in a, with a straight face that the reason why you can explain this current super profits in our society, despite no real growth in the actual economy, is because Netflix workers are just that productive. These Netflix writers who are writing cuties, the reason why Netflix is growing. Because if it were, because they make this stupid, I'm like, well, if it wasn't for them, you wouldn't have Netflix. But that's not why Marx was saying labor is responsible for surplus value. If you didn't have machines, you couldn't do it. If you didn't have this, you couldn't do it. There's a very specific reason why Marx explains surplus value in terms of labor. And that reason is, that for Marx, value itself was just the estranged expression of this more fundamental material force that he called abstract human labor, which was the vital source for the way in which society was being material, materially transformed. It was the material cause of society's transformation, or the transformation of nature, I should say. It's not just that it was defined by how important it is for the process of production. If, we're ju if, if everything was just a matter of the technical necessities or the material necessities of production, among which include various natural, geographical, and so on and so on conditions, which Marx also talks about, then we would not be speaking about any human element of exchange and sociality in general. It labors the decisive element insofar as we are speaking about a fundamentally social mode of production, right? It is how human beings divide the general labor between themselves in the production of a general social product in the form of profit in the aggregate. And many of you, what is profit in the aggregate? Well, it's already measured now 
And this is what Marx was anticipating for why he said socialism was inevitable in the form of, like, um, the unity of political and economic interests and, and states needing to produce profits, like general profit in the form of GDP and so on and so on. Or you could maybe, if you want to get more interesting, talk about trade deficits or trade surpluses, which is a different story, right? But the, the important thing you have to mention here is that Marx didn't just, didn't just assert some axiomatic definition. The reason why labor, general labor, had the privileged conceptual status that it, it did for Marxism was because Marx believed it could explain the economic outcomes in the form of surplus value and the falling rate of profit within our society. Now, those who want to make the argument that the super profits are entirely responsible for something changing in the nature of labor, that... Well, Netflix workers are just such special snowflakes, snowflakes, and that's why they, they produce the billions that Netflix rakes in. Do you guys seriously believe that nonsense? Do you seriously believe that the, all of these mega profits that we're witnessing on Wall Street and all that stuff is directly because of the labor of the employees? Nobody fucking buys that because it's complete fucking bullshit. More scandalously... And this is something Yannis Varoufakis has pointed out, and this is what will break the Twitter left and the so-called Marxists of Twitter. Here it is. Ready? You ready for the scandalous revelation? I don't know how to break this to you, but since 2008, and I would argue before 2008, actually. I would actually go out of my way to argue after 2008, or before 2008, probably beginning with the 1970s and the abandonment of the gold standards and the collapse of the Bretton Woods system. I don't know how to break this to you. Profits are not even any longer the source of economic growth in our society. Not only can you not say that the type of performance exacted by employees is responsible for the super profits that we're witnessing, profits themselves are no longer the primary driving force of economic growth. Profits themselves are no longer the primary linchpin of our economy in general. If profit is not even the fundamental mode of economic accumulation anymore, how do these people expect their dogmatic rendering of Marx's theory of value and his understanding of labor, to, how do they find that sustainable? What implications does this have for the various social formations and classes within our society? That is what we need to start asking and what we need to start evaluating. If profit is no longer even what's driving the accumulation of economic goods and economic growth, how the fuck can you sustain a dogmatic, crystallized class analysis ripped out of the 19th century and abstractly, textually applied to today as just referring to anyone who's an employee? First, you have to prove that general labor is what is responsible for the production of surplus value. Then, you have to explain why surplus value appears to no longer even be being produced anymore. It is no longer the driving force of economic growth since 2008. You have a lot of explaining to do if you're going to try and sustain this idea that anyone who's an employee is a proletarian. You have a whole lot of fucking explaining to do. A whole lot. So what is responsible for the economic growth that we're witnessing since 2008, actually? It's something called quantitative easing. Quantitative easing. Banks. And I'm just going to focus specifically on Europe and America right now. The Federal Reserve and the, uh, the Euro Group. Sorry, I forget their name. The European Central Banks and the Federal Reserve have simply printed money and injected it into the economy. The so-called profits that you're witnessing on the stock market are not authentic capitalist profits in any meaningful sense. They are not profits based on a competitive market and based on the sale of commodities and therefore redistributing the amount of total wealth in society and concentrating it in the form into the capitalist enterprises. Uh, in the form of uh, profits and income. It's based on politically produced credit, monetary economic credit, that is being pumped into the economy and then redistributed among the financial elites in the form of what's going on in the stock market. They are just redistributing the political credit being injected into the economy. It's almost as if we live in a type of socialism 
It's almost like we live in a type of socialism, and at a central level, the government is giving out these green, or I don't know what they look like in Europe, these green paper slips that say, hey, this will give you access to some of the goods or a given quantity of the goods that are socially produced in our society, right? They're printing out this money and giving it, injecting it into the economy, and then in the stock market, it is merely being redistributed among our ruling class in specific types of ways. Now, I'm not saying it's entirely artificial and that the stock market is all fake coordination, but you saw with the GameStop controversy how much that shit is rigged. When people decide, because on Reddit or whatever, people realize like, hold on, they're actually coordinating how the stock market works, and they're planning it in order to reap this excess of money that's being injected into the economy by the government. What if we use our use the power of the internet to create like an um, a decentralized uh, channel of information where we will signal collectively on the basis of a common social cause and also on the basis of trying to get rich that we want to pump the value of a given stock? It worked, and it worked so fucking well that the platforms that are accessible to the general public to the stock market shut down shut down because of how much the gamestop stuck stuff created a panic for the hedge fund investment um enterprises and these wall street insiders robin hood or whatever right so this idea you have to think about this right how is this capitalism in any traditional sense please explain to me how this is the traditional form of capitalism that can be explained with the prior form of the law of value something is not something is quite awry to say the least something is quite awry to say the least in terms of how our economy fucking works and how the economy fucking works was the whole point of Marx's capital. You think Marx would want you to have this dogmatic view where he, he's going to... Well, in Marx's time, you had something called general labor. And the various forms of skilled labor were just multiplications and compounding in, uh, forms of this general labor, this simple labor, which is the least quantum of simple labor. As Marx himself put it, right here in Capital, skilled labor counts only as skilled simple labor intensified, or rather, multiplied simple labor. A given quantity of skilled being considered equal to a greater company quantity of simple labor. That's why Marx can say things like, yes, you know, um, even a, a bank teller, or even some kind of you know, writer maybe is considered a worker in capitalism because everyone's labor is reduced to this general standard. But we no longer have a general standard of labor, or at least as far as the professional managerial class is concerned, its form of labor cannot be measured in any general standard. It is fundamentally bounded up with the technical, logistical, and social, or, or sorry, organizational uh, necessities of these institutions to coordinate human bodies um, to fulfill their ends. Labor, in that sense, has been reduced to a purely technical role in the administrative and bureaucratic uh, corporate institutional machine, as far as the professional managerials are concerned. It's not that they're, being, they're selling their labor, right? It's that their labor is factoring in, their so-called labor is so fundamentally entangled with how these institutions operate that it can't even be abstracted from them. The national struggle has generally lost its connection to the general labor. No, I would argue the opposite. I would argue that general labor is only ex given expression at the national level, on the national political level, at least. That's why a national general strike would be the most authentic expression of working class power in this country, which is why people like Hassan reacted so negatively to the calls for a general national strike. Hassan doesn't want to see a general national strike. He wants to preserve all these hierarchies of the different social formations in our society so that the Netflix writers can organize and they all organize separately and they're not held to a common popular standard. Hassan is effectively defending a neo-feudal hierarchical um, social environment where everyone knows their place. Oh, you're, you're the plumber cleaning toilets in McDonald's? That is where you belong. Oh, you should just unionize so your life can get a little better. How about no one should have to work at fucking McDonald's cleaning toilets, huh? How about we shouldn't have to be forced to have these shitty fucking jobs, Hassan, huh? You want to fucking unionize shitty jobs? 
You want to get rid of the shitty fucking jobs. No one wants to have a shitty fucking job, Hassan. Doesn't matter if you want to unionize it or not. Oh, here's, it, here's how it's... This is what Hassan is basically telling you. Here's how it's going to work. I'm the Twitch streamer, or I'm the Netflix employee, or I'm the actor in Hollywood, and I'm going to unionize, and then I'm going to go to Starbucks. Ta-ta! Can you please get me a Frappuccino worker? I'm going to go to McDonald's. Can you please? Oh, I don't have to feel. Listen, you're unionized. You know your place, and I know my place. And it's all a harmonious, feudal, harmonious, great chain of being. And what has been for Red saying? We're saying, hey, McDonald's workers, social workers, uh, social service workers, guess what? You're a human being, and you're an American. You don't deserve to fucking work these shitty jobs. Let's get some real jobs back to Americans. Let's cut the working day. Let's get some universal fucking income. And let's allow us to live dignified human lives and level this economic playing field so that all the hidden talent within you can actually be expressed. Let's give you a baseline basic income. Let's get our basic jobs back. And then if you know how to be a good, successful businessman, you'll do better than Hassan. You see that person cleaning toilets in McDonald's? If they were put on a level economic playing field with a fucking soy boy like Hassan, whew, that person would become a very successful businessman, and he'd get a bunch of big booty bitches, and he'd be on a yacht, and he'd have a fucking Lambo and shit, and Hassan would be sh fucking shining his shoes. That's what Hassan fears. That's what Hassan fears. That's what Hassan's scared of. The real class struggle that these fucking DSA parasites are afraid of. That's what these fucking DSA parasites don't fucking want to happen. And my only fucking question for the so-called communist party is what the fuck makes you different from the DSA? We already have a fucking DSA. We don't need another one. We need a fucking working class party for working class Americans. We need a future. Yeah, communists aren't against being able to hustle and get rich. We just want people to have the opportunity and we want a dignified way of life so you don't have to choose between either being super rich or cleaning toilets. Yeah, maybe some people will get rich and they'll live a lavish lifestyle. They'll have big booty bitches on their yacht, but you'll still have a dignified way of supporting yourself and your family. You'll still live in a dignified way. And just like how China does, we're not going to let the rich or people who make a good life for themselves, maybe we shouldn't even call them the rich no more. It would just be called them the flourishing class under communism, right? The people who are especially, you know, they hustled, they made, they made a good life for themselves. You don't got to be jealous. They're not going to rig the system in their favor because the communist party is going to be the highest power in the land. They're not going to be able to fucking uh, rig the system against you. The government, the communist party is going to serve the people only. You understand? We're not against people trying to make a living for themselves. That's why Infrared fucks with the GameStop. We're about the GameStop communism, yeah. We fuck with the people who work in these shitty fucking service sector jobs, these dead-end fucking corporate jobs, and they're trading crypto, and they're on the fucking uh, stock market on their phone doing Wall Street and shit because they're trying to game the system and get ahead. And those people are hungry. Those people are hustlers. Those people are hungry. A lot of talent among those fucking people, and they know how to grind. They know how to fucking work hard. And Hassan wants those people to be eating shit, fucking working dead-end jobs, not even having a fucking chance, while Hassan fucking laughs his way to the fucking bank as this new feudal lord, this new aristocratic lord. Just like that fucking picture with Nancy Pelosi. Let me tell you the fucking future Hassan's trying to fucking give us, huh? Let me show you our feudal future with Hassan trying to make himself the prince. He's gonna be your prince, Prince Hassan. Prince Hassan and our new, our neo-feudal fucking future. Let me show you. What the fuck is this, huh? Nancy Pel this is the socialism DSA is fighting for. Everyone knows their place. Nancy, uh, bride and husband, everyone, oh, she knows her place. We know our place. We all know our place in our society. We all, guys, we all know our place. And these are our lords and worshippers oh socialist gods you are our socialist gods we are all gonna be left behind eating shit and and we're gonna be we're, we're gonna be unionizing at our mcdonald's job and we will bow before you as you walk past megan markle's coming to town guys everyone say hi to megan markle oh we are your peasants we are your slaves megan markle prince harry the british monarchy yes 1619 project 
America was a mistake. The Republic was a mistake. All men are not born equal. Some of us do deserve to clean toilets instead of having dignified ways of life. Yes, Meghan Markle, princess. Yes, I'm going to throw away my American flag. Return to the fold of the British Empire. Oh, the sins of the past. I'm so guilty. I'm so guilty for the past. That's why we need Meghan Markle and Prince Harry to be our leaders. Oh, Nancy Pelosi. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. Yes, we will not have 1776 again. Oh, 1776? What do you mean we're, we're going to rise up and, and, and take back our country? What do you mean 1776 will come commence again and, 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 and the people will rule this country again? We're going to give this country back to the people and that we're going to have dignified ways of life and that... <clears throat> You know, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna fight the aristocrats, we're gonna put all these nobles and aristocrats and feudal lords on a, on a level playing field. No, I cannot be on a level, please, I would never, 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 please forgive me for the thought. <laughs> Speaker Pelosi, please, please, Speaker Pelosi, Speaker Pelosi, please. Speaker Pelosi, listen, I would never think that... This woman isn't equal to me. I am but a cock who cleans toilets and watches Hassan. And I have, I'm a member of my DSA. I'm a member of the DSA. I'm a member of the DSA, a.k.a. The Catholic Church uploading the feudal order of 2021. Yes, yes, yes. Just like the Catholic Church in the Middle Ages, we have the DSA today that's upholding the great chain of being. And we all know our place, but we're unionizing, so it's okay. Oh, yes. Speaker Pelosi... We are not equals. I cannot. I am but a peasant. I was made to clean toilets. I was made to clean toilets and eat shit. That's what I was made for. I could, I could never dream of a different way of life. Yes, I could never. Hell, that's not what I'm talking about. Let's say 1776 will commence again. The American people are going to rise up and we're going to give this republic back to the people. All men are created equal. Hassan's not better than you. None of these fucking Hollywood celebrities are better than you. All these fucking Wall Street people are fucking better than you. We're all fucking men. We're all fucking red-blooded men and women, whatever the fuck else you want to call yourself. We're all fucking human beings here. These people are fucking better than us. These people don't have fucking more talent than you. They're not fucking smarter than you. They don't fucking work harder than you. And you call us fascists, you call us fascists, and you're maintaining a fascist, imperialist form of feudal slavery for the debt slavery for the fucking population while you're in the fucking DSA, right? Shut the fuck up, bitch. Oh, oh, Speaker Pelosi. And you're going to listen to Hassan, right? You're going to listen to this fucking Hassan fraud, right? You're going to listen to Hassan the fraud. How dare he's got the Soviet flag in his background. To Let's go. Thank you, Black Lenin. He's got the flag of the workers and peasants who rose up and overthrew the satanic, corrupt, decadent Russian aristocracy and fucking monopoly landowners in fucking Russia who gave their fucking country back to its people and he's carrying their fucking flag. Let's watch Hassan's reaction. Let's watch Hassan's reaction. He's got the Bernie Cuck cu cardboard cutout in his fucking back. Because he's preparing us for a fucking fascist junta with a fucking AOC and neocons are going to take over. And I thought I'm going to be fucking sitting there fucking shrugging it off right in front of our fucking faces. Let's go. It's Friday. Chat is rejoiced. Bro, when you say, t first of all, like, the academics side is like, Classic, okay? That's like classic fucking fascist posturing. Fascist posturing to call out the academic parasites? How? Lenin called the intellectuals the shit of the nation. He said they think they're the golden key of the nation. They're the shit of the nation. And he calls it fascist? He calls it fascist? Why? Because we have the internet now and we don't need these... Fucking gatekeeping academics to tell us what the kingdom to the kings of knowledge are anymore? 
Because we have the internet now, the fucking, at the touch of our fingers, we can learn anything, we can know anything. But we have to preserve the academics, unless you're a fascist. Oh, apparently, we're all, they're trying to gaslight us about fucking history. Anybody who's against the social parasites, the fucking monopolists, the rentier, intellectual property, fucking monopolists, trying to gatekeep knowledge to the masses and to the people, we're fascist, apparently. Everyone's a fascist, everyone's a fascist, you're a fascist, you're a fascist. Fascist, you're a fascist unless you bow before. Unless you let me show you, let me show you, let me show you. Let's go back. I gotta remind you, I gotta show you what we're up against, what we're dealing with. Listen, listen, listen. Unless you bow before this royal couple, you're a fascist, classic fascist. Let me be an academic. Oh, yes, I'm an academic. I'm an academic. My credentials are wondrous credentials and i bow before me you piss ant peasant bow before your academic masters we are gods and if you shit on us academics yeah it's a big club and you're not in it and and if you dare go against the interests of us academics Ooh, you're a fascist. You're a fascist. We're going to call you a Nazi and a fascist because fascism just means anything that makes my tummy queasy. Fascism means anything that makes my tummy queasy and uncomfy. That's fascism. Fascism is anything that makes my tummy uncomfy. I'm uncomfy. That's fascism. Hassan's calling anybody who challenges. Why, why, let me ask you a question. I always pointed this out. Why is it that the protected class is the ruling class? Oh, remember I made a tweet about soy boys and everyone got mad? Why is, but Bill Gates and Joe, Jeff Bezos are soy boys. Why are they the protected class? They're literally the people who rule our country, the billionaires. Why are academics a protected class? How are academics an oppressed, vulnerable? Well, you can't, you can't challenge the ruling class or they're going to call you a fascist. Fascist. You can't challenge these people or they're gonna smear you as the bad guy when well, you're just fighting for the oppressed against the oppressor You're fighting for the have-nots against the people who have power and they're calling you the bad guy and you the fascist What a topsy-turvy fucked up world These dumbasses don't know anything And so many of the fucking things that I heard from them like the criticisms last night. Oh, this is one of the speakers academics teachers Oh, he's still talking about the general strike. Because remember, Hassan does not want a general nationwide strike because he wants to preserve the class position of the professional managerials, which is threatened by a general uh, strike, which is going to level everybody on a playing field. Social workers, engineers, managers, nurses, and Netflix writers are not working class. Bro, when you say, t first of all, like, the academics side is like classic, okay? That's like classic fucking fascist posturing. Classic fascist posturing according to Hassan. Classic fascist posturing according to Hassan. That's fascism according to Hassan. That's fascism. But when you put teachers on there, it's like, are you stupid? It's literally- No, it's not fucking stupid. It means stop thinking that teachers and nurses are going to be the nucleus of a fucking working class movement when in essence they are not working classes now are they working people yes but as teachers and as nurses they are not working class and their interests as teachers and as nurses can contradict the interests of a ge the general working class can and have now do they necessarily have to no, but it's one of those things where you have to keep in mind the various social dynamics and social forces at play in this country in relation to the general political strategy. Again, lefties worship teachers because teachers vote Democrat. Lefties worship nurses because nurses vote Democrat. But you also have things where nurses are refusing vaccine mandates. And all of a sudden, nurses suck then, right? So it's all based on which classes are more going to be able to be brainwashed and to be buying into their fucking ideology and nothing more. It's not, I, I saw this tweet by this one dumb fuck, this literal dumb fuck on Twitter. I forget what her name is. She goes, you're just saying this because she's like a big account. She's like, 
Because these are female professions and you're misogynistic. That's not why. You're just saying that because these people vote Democrat. Social workers are not working class. No, they're institutionalized. And as social workers, their interests are going to align, be aligned with the professional managerials and with the ruling class and the status quo. Now, as human beings, they can turn against their social worker interests. And oftentimes that does outweigh. Now, let's be honest. We're all human beings. Our need to support our families and put bread on the table and live dignified lives is going to outweigh the interests that are bounded up with our specific class. That can outweigh it and usually does outweigh it actually. That's why teachers go on strike. It's why nurses go on strike. That's why social workers can go on strike. You're really only going to be able to measure that in a general nationwide strike. Literally at the heart of the working class. Okay? Like how, what the fuck? Me. It's wild, dude. It's so sad. It's so fucking incredibly sad. That, like, there are brilliant fucking leftist voices out there. Like, who, Hassan? Who's the brilliant leftist voices? Bad Bunny? <laughs> Who's the brilliant voices that aren't being heard? Who, Hassan? Who? Who are the brilliant fucking voices whose voices aren't being heard? Who are these brilliant people you're talking about? Are you talking about Matt Chrisman, the slob, Matt Chrisman, the slob, Jabba the Matt? Oh, or, or maybe he's talking about Anthony Fantano, a guy who's so despised and resented and shit upon in the hip hop community that he's become such a joke that on, literally only people like Hassan vouch for him. Or maybe he's talking about Anna Kasparian, or he's, he's talking about G3, 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 or Truanon, or AOC. Is it AOC's voice he's talking about? Remember, the people coming after me and Jackson... Are literal defenders of the squad and OOC and supported funding for Israel's fucking Iron Dome system. And yet, like, these fucking weirdos are, are, I mean, they're not really, like, prominent at all. They're not really, like, prominent at all. That's why, like, it's only a matter of time before we surpass even you. Like, give it, like, two or three years and we're gonna probably surpass you. So, it doesn't even, I don't know. Yeah, Pol Pot. <laughs> Yeah, this is literally Pol Pot, dude. You, you wear glasses, you're not working class. I'm going to kill you. No, it's Pol Pot. It's Pol Pot. I can't even say what's actually on my mind because it's probably not allowed. So I'm just going to leave it at that. But I, I'm not going to say nothing further. Okay. Lips are sealed. Zipped, zipped lips. All I can say is that the history of communism is important to study. You. That's what Jason Pol Pot Hinkle ha uh, is thought okay. is uh, thinking over here. I don't know who the fuck this guy is either. Hiccap. Just like he didn't know who infrared was, right? Just like how Hassan didn't know who infrared was, and yet, literally, you could see the fear on his face whenever I'm so much as mentioned. They you guys know Marx actually tried to prove how labor produces surplus value? He didn't just make a moral argument like how, uh, oh, without me, you wouldn't be able to make a profit. That's not the argument. Marx actually systemically proved it in capital, and you have to sustain his demonstration of proof today. And what I'm saying is you can't do that. You can't, you can't say sur nurses produce surplus value. Demonstrate how they produce surplus value. How? How do you measure that? Okay, you sat through one of these things and all they did was talk about crypto, talk about how much of a fucking class enemy I am, talk about Rachel Maddow, instead of literally talking about like labor organizing and having labor organizers and union leaders on their fucking broadcast where they're supposed to be talking. Like, like the Netflix walkout, that's what he's thinking of when he says that, but he's thinking of the Netflix walkout people. Talking about like launching something that could Let's literally put you in jail, out. okay? People in the past who have tried to execute general strike have gone to jail, okay? The bourgeois capital. Do not, do not ever think about a general strike. And I'm not, I'm totally not CIA. Don't even try to conceive of a general strike. Hold on, go, on, go back to Netflix. Go back to the graduate student unions. Do not think about a general strike. Do not even consider a general strike. General strike, very scary, very, very much. No, 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 stay away from a general strike. American government will not allow you to organize something like that they will literally kill you they will throw you in fucking jail they will do everything you heard that i'm gonna terrorize you into not even considering entertaining the idea of a general strike oh my don't then no general strike guys just watch me watch me watch hassan and i'm gonna go hang out with miss kiff and uh ludwig
Watch me. Don't don't even think about a general strike. Because the people who genuine question are academics not working class? No, of course they are, dude. Shut the fuck up. This is Of course they are. Every, of, how dare you, you fascist? How dare you imply that academics aren't working class? I myself am working class. I'm a streamer. Look. Here's the thing, okay? A lot of these people are super American, okay? That's just what it is. They they adopt the aesthetics of like fucking, you know, like Pan-African nationalism, or they might adopt the aesthetics of like Maoist, uh, you know, third worldist rhetoric. They might adopt- Who are you fucking talking about, Hassan? Those are the people attacking us every day, you dumb fuck. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. That as, uh, as an aesthetic, but ultimately, they are so fucking shackled and so burdened by an, a hyper-Western understanding that is inherently reactionary. Uh, what the fuck are you talking about? Go ahead and explain, Hassan. Explain why your perspective is Eastern and, and ours is Western. Explain what's Eastern about your perspective that OnlyFans is the proletariat. Go ahead. And and completely continues along that same demystification of class, the mystification of class and class analysis and material. Like the moment that you say academics are not working class, like no, you're like you're a Fox News commentator, okay? What? Why not? From from the perspective of Marxist theory of value, they're not working class. They're not proletarians. They don't produce any fucking value, dumbass. They, those people were considered petty bourgeois by communist parties forever. Communist parties thought they were petty bourgeois. They didn't call them working class. What the fuck are you talking about, Hassan? Academics are literally one of the fucking areas in which there is so much exploitation occurring. Oh no, they're exploiting. They're, they're exploiting the citations. They're exploiting the site. They're exploited. <laughs> the load of the academics. Nurses aren't working class. Engineers aren't working class. Like, shut the fuck up. You have no understanding of class and uh, analysis. Okay. Yeah, Hassan, that's why you'll never put it on the line and see if your class analysis can hold when someone who actually knows anything about Marxism fucking challenges you. You cannot fucking sustain your fucking fake understanding of class. You can't. Why? Why? Wait, wait. What? Where have we gotten to this point where the literal social elites are the oppressed class that are victims of the right wing and fascists? Like, why do those people represent the left? So you're telling me that the right wing represents the actual working class who work with their hands and you represent the fucking pink, the pink handed, soft handed fucking liberal aristocrats who live in the fucking cities looking down on everyone else it's literally an upside down world so the privileged are the oppressed and the oppressed are the privileged right really triggers the fuck out of me especially when they are literally doing exactly what i'm doing just significantly infinitely less successful and also way more delusional all right let's actually measure the success Hassan started out with TYT backing with Jenk Jenk. He already had Hollywood connections, was already on TYT. Years and years of experience being in fucking media. Year later, one year later, he's about what? 1K average views? Take Haas. Haas started on Mar started March on Twitch. Zero backing, zero connections, zero fucking anything. 600 average views by November. I'm nowhere. I am not successful. I have 13,000 followers and 600 average views and nearly 2,000 subs. If this isn't success, I don't fucking know what success looks like. Even if I only had 200 views right now, I would still be an incredibly successful streamer. And you know what has, you know what keeps this guy up at night? And this is literally the truth. I am literally a better streamer than Hassan. And I don't even need, I don't even fucking need to collaborate with XQC. So that's the other part of it. It's not like these are fucking union welders that are like, yo, fuck this guy. Fuck this piece of shit. This Hassan guy. And that's that's how you know. Last night, the entire fucking night, it was like, these motherfuckers were like, huh, I bet he's doing this to fucking, you know, why doesn't he donate his own money? First of all, it's a fucking t-shirt that I could just pocket. Next time, I'll just pocket it, okay? Next time, I won't raise money for fucking strike funds. Okay, you got it. Secondly, oh, he's just doing it for clout. Lastly, um... 
on top of that, oh, this is, oh, it's just for clout, right? Shut the fuck up, Hassan. This is a tax deductible donation. No, it's not. You would know that if you've ever donated to a fucking mutual aid uh, fund or if you've ever donated to a fucking strike fund. It's. Have you ever donated to the Netflix walkout fund? Literally not fucking tax deductible. It's not a 501c3. It's a GoFundMe, you fucking jackass. You would know that if you've ever fucking donated, but you've never donated because you think Twitter posts are activism. The difference between me and you is that I buy a $3 million house and then call myself an activist while streaming in front of 50,000 people on Twitch telling them they can't do a general strike. Me and motherfuckers like this is that I know I am irrelevant ultimately, okay? I am nothing without my community. Here's the thing is that you're not irrelevant, you fucking dumbass. You have 50,000 concurrent viewers. How is that fucking irrelevant? You're just not good at using the following that you have to actually make a difference in the world, which is why you're gonna fall off, Hassan. I guarantee you're gonna fall off. Your shit is not going to fucking actually last.